Word of God is very, very important to us. True and elect Rastafari in this little flock, this this remnant in these here in these here last days and time. Now, hallelujah. Thanks be to God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and through Christ in his kingly character and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. And this is an interesting verse because Exodus is 2 Corinthians, who being inspired by 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, the epistle of our beloved brother Hawaria Paulos. And what's so very interesting about this is that when we look at it from so-called 2,000 years ago, it is still applicable in spirit and in truth today and to us. For we are to exiavihir lotus of hat, a sweet savor of Christos. In them that are saved, in those who are saved, this ministry of the line of Judah society is as a sweet savor of Christ of Christos, of the Moshiach, Yahoshua, of Christ and his kingly character, in them that are saved, in those who are safe, because of the knowledge and the manifestation and application of the truth, and in them that perish. To the one, we are the savor of death to death. So when some hear this message, this message is a deadly message. You understand? It's death to them. You understand? When they hear the true ministering of the gospel of Christ in his kingly character. And to the other now, to the other is the savor of life to life. Of life to life. So see, there's a judgment by the ministering and the hearing of the word of truth. And who is sufficient? Who is sufficient for these things? Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many. And this is our disclaimer concerning tithing. When we say that Jah's people tithe. That the true Rastafari people overstand and apply the law of tithing. And thus are blessed according to the contractual agreement in the Adis Kidan. Which is based on the Metaf Kedus or the glory of his imperial majesty. Which is the holy Bible. For we are not as many. Second Corinthians, the epistle of our beloved brother Hawari Paulos, chapter 2, verse 17, says to us that, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God. We speak in Christos. We speak in and through Christ. This is a beautiful, a beautiful and accurate verse, especially to really start off these teachings on tithing and on His Imperial Majesty's divine economy that's revealed through His Majesty's Bible and the true faith of Edomawi Haile Selassie in Getachin Jesus Christos. But well, let's hear this in the royal Amharic for a moment. Hule tenyaitu ye huariao ye paolo sa melikut wode karonto sa sewoch. The second epistle of the Apostle Paul to the people of Karontos, of Corinth, or Corinth. And Miraf Hulet. Chapter 2, verse 17, what we just read in the in English from the King James. In the Telakin, in the Telakin, be exiavi her feet, be Christos honen, in the Nagralen, in the Nagralen. For we are not as many which corrupt 
the word of God, but as of sincerity, as of sincerity, Bamarinya back in net again, back in the net again, back in the net. Internet means being straightforward, being straightforward. You know what I'm saying? Forward ever, backward never. This is the word, internet, internet, being right, being straight. You know what I'm saying? Being direct. You understand? Being upfront and being honest, sincerity, but as of God. Now, what? How Hawari Apollos expresses this, and the King James does some justice to to the original the original writing and the original thought, where it says, "For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but." as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christos. Notice how he uses God, Elohim, in the Hebrew, or Dios in, in, in the, so there's something the Greek, for us, Egeziavi here, how he uses Egeziavi here, you understand, how he emphasizes, you understand, that's the word of God, as of God, in the sight of God, he uses God's name in a trinity here. As a kedus, kedus, kedus. He uses it in a trinity here. And it's very interesting, the, the, the meaning and, and the force of this. Because we have to understand what is he speaking on and how we can utilize this word even in this present time as we speak on the message of Jah's people tithe. That tithing is an important part of our way of life and of us keeping the covenant. And there's a very important, applicable, logical reason to it. And the lack thereof keeps us disunited, disorientated, you understand, at the mercy of the wolves in the sheep clothing and, and divided, you understand, and scattered as though we have no shepherd. We have a shepherd, you understand, we have a shepherd in the King of Kings and his Christ. So the Hawaria Paulos is, is laying down a very important reminder and fact and it's actually a praise right here that we began to read from about, uh, from about verse uh, four, 14. You understand, uh, roughly around verse 14 is where we began, though, though the section is the last part of the particular chapter, chapter 2 of 2nd Hulatanyaya 2. Yehoariya <laughs> Amlak miskana yuhun. He says, le amlak miskana yuhun. His way of saying hallelujah here, according to the Ethiopic, according to the royal Amharic, he says, le amlak, le amlak miskana yuhun. And many of you know that we use miskana, we say miskana a lot. You know saying? In the line of the Jewish society. And it's a very important um, spiritual, spirituality reason as well as a holistic reason for understanding that giving thanks when we say give thanks we say miskana 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 give thanks according to the teaching of his imperial majesty and especially here in his metaf kedus he says le amlak miskana yuhun so that should become a phrase for us too le amlak amlak the source the source sent the amlak the Ethiopic word for what you know in the English and the Germanic as gold or God, but the word gold and God actually comes out of um, heathenism from the Goyim. You know, it comes from the non-Hebrew and the non-Israelites, the non beta Israel, the word God. And the word God is actually a pagan idol, and that pagan idol has another name that you might know. It's called fortune, fortune and fortuna, fortuna. So when you look at the word God, G-O-D, you go back to the Hebrew, it's actually G-A-D, and the word God 
in the Hebrew, G-A-D, is a pagan idol. Oh, excuse me. See, that word pagan creeps in. We don't want to say pagan in that sense. Why? Pagan means of the countryside. We did a teaching on this, and some of y'all may have, have remember this and have heard it. Others may not have heard it yet. I don't think it's been posted yet. But the difference between pagan and urbanos, how they use these games of words. Instead of calling ones pagan, we call them heathen or goy or goyim or of the ahzab, of the nations or the other non-Hebrew and non-Beta Israel peoples. But the Hebrews were of the paganas. In other words, they were of the countryside. Because that's the blessing. So Satan has twisted up these words and the concepts and the meaning. And this is what that's confused a lot of people. So we want to go forward to speak about God, God, Gad, which is Fortuna, which is the God of this world, or Mammon.